Hey guys, welcome to my garden. I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, this is actually getting pre-recorded like a lot of the videos lately. So this is gonna be some old news by the time the video goes out. Hopefully things will have grown even more, but uh, this is my spring into summer garden tour. Um, and I'm filming this on March 29th, 2022. First thing you'll notice if you've been here before is that we did a lot of like hardscaping work um, last summer, uh, sort of late summer into the fall um, before my second daughter's birthday party. We had a sort of COVID semi-friendly birthday in the backyard and so um, we had like a, a soft play structure set up over here so that was fun. Um, this is the you can see there's a lot of grass that's growing here because this was a whole field of weeds. Now it's rocks and there's still grass growing. So we're working on that, um, coming out and weeding as much as we can to try to get that under control. But this is the original garden bed we started with last, uh, or two years ago in 2020. Um, and then we added two new beds here, um, both four by four, and then these uh, cattle panel trellises from the design that, um, that Roots and Refuge Farm uses. I think everyone who's into gardening YouTube has probably seen these and I do really love them. Um, what's on them right now is from the winter um, garden. This is uh, sugar snap peas that are starting to show their age. Uh, there's still a couple up here at the top um, that are growing, so I haven't torn them out yet, but I will soon because we've got some, uh, let me turn, so I'm using my gimbal today. Um, we've got some green beans growing down here. These are Marvel of Venice beans. I actually have a couple because I have a couple spots to fill. Um, this is what the dry bean looks like, but the pot itself is a yellow potted variety, which I'm hoping will be nice and easy to harvest. So I'm just gonna plop a couple more in here. It just rained yesterday, so everything's nice and moist. So those green beans are gonna come in and fill in the whole trellis and I'll pull out the peas um, and give room for that and succession plant a couple more on this side so that we can fill in the whole thing if this dies back. I might just leave it as is because this nasturtium is being, being very happy where it is and it is sort of the home, sometimes home of a lizard who eats caterpillars. So I kinda wanna keep him there. Um, let's take a look over this way. Um, I'm doing sort of a square foot method, but I don't have any of this. Well, I guess I have one string, two strings left. Um, it's not gridded out just in my brain. It's gridded out. So, um, the middle two squares here, um, and you can see it's like, this one gets no sun and probably won't do well. Um, but anyway, this two by two spot is soybeans. So these have just been coming up over the last week or so. Um, I need to thin them out probably in the next couple of days. Um, I have never tried edamame before. I mean, I've eaten edamame. I've never tried growing edamame before and I'm excited to. These are a bush bean. They I think just grow to be like a couple of feet tall. And um, they should do nicely in here, I think. Then uh, in the middle, you can see the um, the video I did with my garden planner where I kind of showed the layout I was planning. I'm using tomato cages this year instead of trying to single stem because I just, I want to be overwhelmed with quantity. Um, so I've got all these cages set up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different tomato varieties. So over here uh, is the Candyland cherry tomato, or I think it's like a current tomato, teeny tiny. Um, over here, very sadly, uh, is, I don't think it's going to make it. This is the brandy one from last year. It's it started out over here and you can see a couple different places where it had some branches, some side branches. Um, it sent up a side shoot from the base, um, in like January and it survived, but then it started to get real sad, like after the frost, not from the frost, but I don't know what, I buried the stem that there was here and I'm pretty sure it's gone. So unfortunately, 
I don't think the brandy wine is going to make it. Instead, I have over here. Can you see? All right, here we go. Um, I, you'll see some of these popped everywhere. Um, this is a black creme. I have these little tiny um, peat pods, and I just have them buried in the garden because I was doing a terrible job of watering them properly. And so I figured burying them in the soil would give them more consistent water, and they've been so much happier. All right, forget the gimbal. I was not framing stuff well. Um, so I have the poppy seeds here. I don't know if they're going to come up or not or if I need to redo that. Anyway, so tomato varieties. That I guess that black crim is going to come over here where the brandy wine sadly was. Um, this one here is a super sweet 100. It already has a couple of baby tomatoes growing on it. You can see this side has like cherry tomatoes. Well, there's the candy land way over here, which is less accessible. But the idea was to have accessible cherry tomatoes in the middle um, under the arches. Um, this one is called Isis Candy. It's another sort of variegated cherry tomato. This one got some frost damage. And then this one too, this lemon boy got some frost damage. We got, I planted tomatoes in like mid February. I know it's crazy. I'm in 10B, um, Southern California, Orange County. And I know it was silly, we were having a, hot, a heat wave and everything, all of my brassicas were bolting. So I'm like, I'm gonna get tomatoes, I'm gonna plant them early. Cause last year I got a late start on tomatoes and I was unhappy with that. So I wanted an early start as possible. <laughs> so they got some frost damage on one night. We got down to like 34, maybe 35, but they're bouncing back. They just have, you know, they're a little bit of a setback, but they're doing okay. And I'm, I'm proud of them. I think they'll be okay. Then over here is a better boy. He is younger than the rest um, because I had cabbages growing here. I just picked him up from Home Depot and I, uh, again, I want to be overwhelmed with tomatoes and I've heard that this one is a good producer. On the other end of the spectrum is the Cherokee Purple, which I've heard gives you like no tomatoes, but is absolutely delicious. And it does have flowers. Um, I'm not sure if I've seen fruit set yet. If I come out and give it a little wiggle my three-year-old named this Minnie, and I told her it would get bigger. She said then she'd name it Minnie Mouse. So she calls it Minnie Mouse. Um, and yeah, it's a Cherokee purple and it's getting nice and big. So that's good. So along this, that's like the middle two squares. So this whole row of square foots, so it's four by four, right? So like, oh, this is four by four. Every tomato has two squares. So there's a little four by one strip here and a four by one strip here where I have stuff. So on this side, I've got, um, I'm trying a different variety of basil I picked up because I we had Home Depot credit. So this is the Everleaf Emerald Towers basil. It tastes to me a little bit milder than the Genovese, but it's very similar. Um, and I think it's just supposed to be maybe taller or more dense or more hardy or something. It's supposed to be heat tolerant. So I figured, all right, sounds good. I'll try it. Um, I have not had luck starting basil from seed. So heirloom varieties don't matter to me with that. I'm just gonna buy another when I need it. Um, this is a Thai basil. It looks a little bit weak and sad, but um, I came out and I pruned it uh, about a week after I planted or transplanted it so that it would split. So we'll see. Um, I last year had a Thai basil and it, I left it kind of bolted for too long. And so it never got as big as I wanted. And then I didn't ever have enough to use it with a lot of stuff, but I do really like it. It's got a nice um, sort of an anise -y flavor. Um, here's another little peat pod. This one has German chamomile. These ones are supposed to have ground cherry seeds, but I haven't had them sprout up yet. I'm gonna show you where the ground cherries will go when eventually I end up with a ground cherry plant. That's gonna be my struggle to start from seed this year. But I hear that they readily reseed, so that's my hope that at least once I get them established in one year, we'll do okay. Um, I had some Anaheim pepper. Uh, well, okay, so that, that little guy, that little twig was the pepper plant I tried to overwinter, but I don't think it made it. I'm gonna to try to overwinter this one by just not doing anything to it and see what happens. Cause I think really, I don't have to worry too much. We have very mild winters here. Like I mentioned, we got frost like twice ever. And even that, not too, too bad. So uh, never like freezing temps. 
Anyway, this one is a jalapeno because at the Home Depot they only had one Anaheim and it was uh, very, very sad. So I grabbed a jalapeno instead. They're similar. Um, and I was still hoping that my Anaheim seeds would start. I just liked the idea that like I got these Anaheim pepper seeds from the city of Anaheim and I'm like growing them in Anaheim anyway. But um, anyway, this is a started plant because I had very little luck with the pepper plant last year. It didn't overwinter. And then the ones this year, I saw one of them sprouted. And then the next morning I came out here and something had eaten it um, just to a little nub. So that's a shame. This little parsley plant is from last summer and it's still fine. It'll probably start bolting soon, but until then I'm going to leave it where it is. Um, it's probably inhibiting the root development of its tomato neighbor. Um, so whenever it starts bolting, maybe that'll have more room. This end in the four by one, a flat leaf parsley. Um, it came with three plants in the pot, all very nicely separated. Um, you do see there's some grass that's popping up in the middle of the bed, which is also a problem. It came from the outside and is making its way in. Um, these, will get more vigorous, I'm sure. This one seems a little weak. Um, but yeah, they're growing new growth. They're, they're gonna be okay. Uh, these over here, what are you? Huh, not sure what that is. I'm gonna leave it and find out. Um, over here, we have green onions, um, garlic uh, chives and onion chives that were all, I moved to them, they were over there. Um, you can see there's one actually, one garlic chive I need to move. Uh, next to that parsley over there, which also will get removed when uh, when it bolts. Parsley is a biennial, so it's good for one year and then it bolts the next year. Um, and again, oh, here's our lizard friend. Can you see him? There he is. He lives under the nasturtium, and he's my bestie because I found um, like a cabbage looper in my lettuce, and I put it on the rock and he came out and ate it and I was like oh okay you're gonna be my good friend now we get a, a lot of lizards back here um and so I'm happy to have them be part of it and oh yeah there's uh you probably have seen other little things volunteering for example little tomato sprouts because the cherry tomatoes from last year um got everywhere and were just left all over the ground and so like these ones here and a little clump is where like a tomato landed. Um, so I'm gonna maybe I'll pot a couple of them and share or something. Unfortunately, I didn't save any seeds, so I kind of wanna save the plants, um, assuming they didn't cross pollinate, which they may, they may have, who knows. Anyway, where were we? The chives and green onions were over on this side and there was a bit of a forest coming because like, I had it all planted out before we put in the trellis, and so I had dill and cilantro and chives all kind of here, but I couldn't reach them properly, and it was a mess. Um, so I am trying to keep things a little bit more tidy and square footy for the spring and summer. So that is the long bed. In the middle over on this other side, we've got some strawberries. I have two different varieties, um, Seascape and something called Eversweet, which is a hybrid. We have so far harvested one strawberry that was about this big and I split it between my two daughters. Uh, they say it was tasty, so I believe them. The first of my new 4x4 beds is the lettuce bed, still hanging on, though I think I really need to come in and harvest the last of it before it all bolts. Um, this is an arugula flower. I don't need arugula to reseed. We had too much. I did um, at my gardener's method of uh, what's it called high intensity lettuce and I have plenty and it's delicious I man like store-bought salads I could take or leave but a homegrown salad is chef's kiss especially love me a Caesar salad straight from my garden I think that's what I'm gonna have for lunch today when I'm done filming this um, this bed feels like it's on the precipice of bolting. We've had some really warm weather. Um, it survived the couple 85 degree days we had, I think. Um, and it's a little cooler now for this week, so maybe this weekend I'll harvest it all, um, or sometime next week when I'm on maternity leave. Um, that's like I said, I'm filming this at the end of March. 
Um, and so this was mustard greens. They started to get um, aphidy and kind of big, so we pulled them out. On that side, I tried to grow spinach, but it never took off. Um, and then I tore out just like the first foot. Sorry about the helicopter overhead. Um, I tore out the first foot of lettuce that I could plant melons. So we're going to have Kajari melons growing on this side. I'm going to tie them up and they'll grow over the one side. And then on the other side, like I said, are the green beans. The back trellis here has shelling peas. I think they're called Wando is the variety. Um, and my little one and a half year old is obsessed. She loves them so much and keeps trying to come out and harvest them before they're ready. Um, but she really likes peas, peas, peas. <laughs> and uh, they're a lot of fun. So I, I think based on how my family has reacted, I might only grow shelling peas next year just because they enjoy it. Um, but we'll see. Maybe they can tell me and then totally lie to me that they're going to eat sugar snap peas. I don't know. Um, when these are done for the season, I'm going to be planting pickles on this side. I'm also planting pickles on this side. And they have, uh, I put in the seeds a couple weeks ago. They're doing okay. It's probably time to thin these out too in a couple places. This is Boston pickling this year. Um, I'm hoping to be overwhelmed with pickles as well as tomatoes. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Um, this was, these were Brussels sprouts until a couple weeks ago. Um, I harvested a bunch of itty bitty teeny tiny group of Brussels sprouts and, um, I had such terrible luck with the Brussels sprouts. I, this is my second year trying them and I'm done. I'm done with heading brassicas. I'm going to do just like kale and collard greens and mustard greens again, but like the leafies, but nothing that heads cause it's just too much. And our growing season isn't long enough, I guess. They were in here all winter, but I think... It's probably just my soil quality. You can see they get absolutely decimated by aphids and it's pretty gross. So I have to take the time to come in here and harvest all of this and get what I can out of it. Um, miniature baby Brussels sprouts are gonna be a delicacy, right? That's a thing. Um, this row here had collard greens. They started to bolt, so I pulled them out and when I'm done harvesting all of the miniature disappointing Brussels sprouts. Um, this bed is going to be the uh, the ground cherry bed, if I can ever get those ground cherries started from seed. Um, hopefully, if they do reseed as easily as people say, it will be the ground cherry bed forever. Um, and hopefully we like them, because I've never had them before, so I'm very excited. Um, so that's going in here. Um, by the way, this mulch is lemongrass. Over there we have a very very happy lemongrass and some very happy rosemary bushes um, that just do their own thing so that's where I get my mulch and then once all of the lettuce is done which again is going to be any day now um, I'm going to put squash in this bed so I've got a standard green zucchini and then yellow it's called lemon squash it's just a, a round yellow squash. I've tried to grow a yellow squash before t the last two years. This is my third summer I'm going into. So um, the last two years I tried growing a yellow crookneck and for whatever reason they were just totally stunted both years. So I'm going to blame it on the seeds and um, I'm going for a different variety. Just a little bit of, you know, color. Um, oh, and so summer squash over here, but ground cherries in this bed except for in the corner I'm going to put one pumpkin plant um, and do the same thing as last year and get our like one jack-o-lantern maybe two off that plant um, and let it maybe vine over that way into the or maybe into the, gra the gravel um, and that's the plan so I am going to go harvest some salad for my lunch <laughs> So that's everything. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, I filmed this a little bit ago at late March. So this is what late March looks like in Southern California. Um, it's like I say, it's cooler today, but it, it was 85 degrees uh, over the weekend. So it's basically, it's firmly spring and spring is very short here. It's gonna be summer soon. I hope that wherever you are, it's getting to be spring growing time and you're enjoying your garden too, um, if you garden. Um, and go ahead and leave your comments below if you have any advice or if you knew what that seat, that uh, volunteer was. It might just be a carrot or something. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Also probably pre-recorded. 
<laughs> because life is busy right now with a new baby. Um, but hopefully I, wherever I am <laughs> when this goes live, I will be getting some good uh, quality gardening time in with the baby and the carrier. All right. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.